Welcome to another scriptural calendar study. We will be focusing on the topic of numbering our days to the fifth new moon here in this annual cycle. And we will also be talking about, once again, numbering our days to Shavuot. As always, stop the video at any time to focus on the scriptural and astronomical information being shared. In this scriptural calendar study, we will be also looking at three categories, starting off with number one, which we call the anomaly for the fifth new moon, which we covered in great detail in previous scriptural study videos, such as the full moon as new moon anomaly, and the topic, can new moon days be on a different day in different countries all over Earth? Our second category will be the scriptural count to Shavuot, which again we covered in this scriptural study entitled Pagan Pentecost or Scriptural Shavuot, along with what we covered last year, which we titled Hallelujah for the fifth new moon fast and Shavuot. And our final category, number three, will revolve around the prophet Daniel and the alignment of the 2300 day prophetic count and how it aligns to Shavuot annually. Okay then, on to category one. And the question, is the anomaly for the upcoming fifth new moon upon us once again? Because many folks are already seeing in their forecasts that new moon day in some locations on earth will take place on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd. And then there are some folks on earth that are saying, no, the new moon day for the fifth month will occur on the pagan day of Monday, August 23rd. So, what does the evidence say from the sun, moon, and stars? So, hallelujah that there are Bereans out there that forecast. So here's my forecast for the fifth new moon. And as we can see, on Sunday, the pagan day of August 22nd, at the dawn at 4.41 a.m., the moon will be 13 degrees above the horizon and 100% illuminated. And by sunrise, the moon at 6.30 a.m. will still be 100% fully illuminated but it will be minus two degrees below the horizon at sunrise. But again, at the dawn, at the commencement of the fourth watch, it greets the sun as it is 13 degrees above, or as some say, beyond the horizon, and again is 100% fully illuminated. Let's explore this a little further, shall we? Again, we covered this in these scriptural study videos. The full moon is new moon anomaly. And can new moon days be on a different day in different parts of the earth? So what is an anomaly? Based on the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition, number one states something different, abnormal, peculiar, or not easily classified. Number two, deviation from the common rule, a or an irregularity. Let's explore this a little further, shall we? Because isn't it a shame that people on earth only use a wristwatch and the Babylonian Catholic Gregorian calendar? Because how many folks actually use all three witnesses with the sun, moon, and stars to number their days? As an example, a wristwatch has three witnesses. What are those three witnesses? Well, when we look at the second hand, it produces a measurement of 60 seconds in a minute, or 3,600 seconds in an hour, and as well, a total of 86,400 seconds in a day. 
when looking at the minute hand, as we can see right here, it produces 60 minutes in an hour, or 720 minutes in 12 hours, and as well, 1,440 minutes in 24 hours. When we look at an hour hand, it produces 12 hours on the clock, but also measures 24 hours in a day. This is a man-made device. Men designed it, and it demands a designer. But when we look at our Father of Lights and his perfect witnesses from above of light, we find out the following measurements for each of those three witnesses, starting with the greater light, which is the sun, which produces a measurement of 365 days annually. In fact, 365.25, as we can read in these scriptural passages. And we can measure the dawn or first light, sunrise, high noon, and sunset. While the second witness, the lesser light, the moon, produces a measurement of 354 days in its annual cycle, as we can read in these scriptural passages. And as we all know, we can measure empirically moonrise to moonset in all four night watches, as the moon rules with the stars, as we can read in this scriptural passage, and as we all know, we can measure its degrees to true north throughout the four night watches and the degrees to the horizon. So again, like a man-made wristwatch, the designer of this calendar and clock is from our Father of Lights, Yahuwah. The third and final witness on this clock and calendar that hangs in the heavens that no man can manipulate the stars in alignment with the sun produce a 364 day annual cycle as per these scriptural passages and produces 85,170 seconds per day or 23 hours and 56 minutes per day which equates to 364 days of time in a 365 solar annual cycle. And with the stars for each of the seven star clusters scripturally and specific stars, we can track or measure them from degrees to true north and degrees to the horizon. So, all of these things on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah can be tried or tested and proven annually for each and every given month and for each of those days in each and every given month. Again, no one on earth takes away from any of the three witnesses on a wristwatch or a wall clock. So why do people on earth take away bits and parts of all of the three witnesses with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah? Again, noble Bereans strive to trust in Yahuwah with all their heart. We do not want to lean on our own understanding or anyone's understanding. Why? Because we do not want to receive, I'm sorry, esteem from one another. We only want to receive the esteem from the Almighty Father of Lights as per the book of Yahukanan or John chapter 5 verse 44, which the emissary Shaul, known as the Apostle Paul today, speaks where the esteem of the Almighty Father of Lights comes from. Yes, those perfect gifts from above, those three witnesses of light, the esteem or the witnesses of the sun, the moon, and the stars. More on this as we go forward. Because when we look at our forecast on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, at the dawn, the moon for my area will be 13 degrees above or beyond the horizon at 100% full illumination. And by sunrise at 6.30 a.m., again in my location, it will still be 100% illuminated, but 
it will not greet the sun at sunrise. It will do that for the first time since the fourth month cycle, greet the sun at the dawn. And this is what announces New Moon Day. Let's continue to find out if this is indeed true. Let's go to Mumbai, India. And on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, the moon will not greet the sun at sunrise in this particular location. The moon will be 99.6% illuminated, but 18 degrees below the horizon at sunrise. And the following day, which is Monday, August 23rd, it will indeed greet the sun at sunrise as the moon will have waned to 99.5 and will be six degrees above. So a person in Mumbai with the one witness approach of the moon greeting the sun at sunrise will think that it's new moon day if you follow this one witness approach and not all of the witnesses. Let's continue. Let's go to Anaheim, California. On the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, the moon will be at its highest point at 99.8% illumination. But by sunrise, it will be below the horizon at minus 15 degrees. But on the pagan day of Monday, August 23rd, the moon will wane to 98.5% illumination and will be above the horizon at 11 degrees and will greet the sun. So for these locations, folks would probably say that Monday, August 23rd, that pagan day, will be New Moon Day. If you look just at the witness of the moon greeting the sun at sunrise. So, which day is New Moon Day for the fifth month that is soon upon us? Is it the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, or the pagan day, Monday, August 23rd? Well, let's do our diligence as Bereans and test and prove. We search the scriptures daily, and we assemble with folks all over earth that are as well doing forecasts. When we go to Honolulu in the state of Hawaii, the moon will greet the sun at sunrise on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd. Uh-oh! Because it'll be 99.8% illuminated at its highest point of illumination, and it'll be two degrees above the horizon. We have a discrepancy, but it's not a discrepancy from Yahuwah. It's a man-made anomaly because of a one-witness approach that people are saying New Moon Day can only occur when the moon greets the sun at sunrise. And as we can see, this is not the case, is it? Let's go to Cape Town, South Africa. Because, again, on Sunday, August 22nd, the pagan day, the moon will greet the sun at sunrise. It'll be at its highest percent illumination at 99.8 and 2 degrees ab above the horizon. Again, when determining New Moon Day, you have to use all three witnesses of light. This is not a discrepancy again from Yahuwah but from man, and we will explain this once again for this particular anomaly that only occurs two to three months out of every given year. Let's take a look at Buenos Aires, South America, because on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, the moon will indeed greet the sun at sunrise, as the moon will be 99.8% illuminated, its highest uh, point, in regards to illumination in four degrees beyond the horizon or above the horizon, as some would say. So again, you have some folks where the sun uh, will be in its position at sunrise and the moon will be greeting it on the pagan day of Monday, August 23rd. And then there are some locations where this will occur on Sunday, August 22nd. At the end of the day, this irregularity is a rule made by man. Because, again, 
as good as the moon greeting the sun at sunrise is as a witness, it doesn't work for every month in a scriptural annual cycle. Two to three months a year, you will see this irregularity. And why? Well, it's simple. You can't use one witness only. You have to look at all three witnesses and their separate components of measurement of light. But people like clicks, they like groups, they like to summarize and simplify this beautiful celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. And as such, it's a process of receiving esteem from one another rather than the full esteem that the Father of Lights provides with his sun, moon, and stars. This is so important. So again, all three witnesses with all of the measurements of light for each of those three witnesses, which can be t uh, tried, tested, and proven with a camera, let alone empirically through the measurement of just monitoring and numbering our days with the light. So again, as we can see on the pagan day of Sunday at 4.41 a.m. in my area, the moon will indeed greet the sun at the dawn, at 100% illuminated. In fact, if we go through this in greater detail, we will find out that all over Earth on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, the moon will greet the sun everywhere on Earth at the dawn or the commencement of the fourth watch, at its highest point of illumination. Welcome to the true new moon day. Again, we are only touching the tip of the iceberg. There is more to this as we have covered in the scriptural study videos. And finally, please do yourself a favor and do an etymological word search on all the words that determine a true scriptural day start you will be very glad that you did. So again, all three witnesses of light with their specific measurements that anyone can film and photograph, let alone empirically number. And you've got the opportunity to go through all four night watches to study the word. So, it's very important to know when a day starts because the taught ones of the Messiah Yahushua prove to us when a day is ending and a new day begins. So as we can see in Matith Yahu chapter 28 verse 1, after the first fruit Sabbath in the month of Abib, the first month of a scriptural year, toward the dawn on the first day of the week, this was the 16th night. And as that day was closing towards the dawn and the next day was starting, that's when they came to the tomb. This witness is further verified in Lucas chapter 24, verse 1. On the first day of the week, which in the third week of a scriptural month of Abib, let alone all scriptural months, is the 16th day and nighttime period. That's the first day of a third week for Abib and all scriptural months. This is further verified with a third witness in the book of Yahukanan or John, chapter 20, verse 1. On the first day of the week, Miriam and Magdala came from the tomb while it was still dark. So again, understanding all of this information will provide further insight why it's so important to study the word during all four night watches because these three witnesses of light do amazing things. They provide signs allowing us to tell time, more specifically the appointed times of Yahuwah. So again, we can test and prove all of this with a simple camera, let alone empirically number it through scripture first. So again, as we can see, this anomaly is a man-made anomaly because we are not utilizing all of the scriptural witnesses of light. 
Again, New Moon Day for the fifth month, that is soon upon us, is indeed on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd. Finally, this irregularity again, for further clarification, is not caused by Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, but by men and women who do not utilize all of the witnesses of light. So again, please trust Yahuwah in all your heart and mind and don't lean on my understanding or anyone else's understanding. Get out there and test and prove this for yourself because the esteem of the sun, the esteem of the moon, and the esteem of the stars can be tested and proven by anyone. Again, if you are interested in this scriptural subject matter, this scriptural study goes into this detail uh, in a much more focused manner with this scriptural study called Full Moon is New Moon, and then this video, which we did three years ago, and other videos seven years ago, and articles ten years ago on the fact that New Moon Days cannot be on different days. And why? Well, that would mean the prophetic counts would be on different days all over earth. Sabbaths would be on different days all over earth. And that obviously is not the case. So again, the moon and stars do indeed rule by night because Yahuwah and his kindness is everlasting. So, dawn, first light, the commencement of the fourth watch is critical uh, in determining or discerning how the sun, moon, and stars operate in perfect harmony together to tell time. So let's take a look at this a little bit further, shall we? So, at the dawn, the commencement of the fourth watch, in my location, the moon will be 100% illuminated and 13 degrees above, or as some say, beyond the horizon. Now take a look at this. Orion known uh, originally as Cassell, will be above the horizon for all to see on Earth, everywhere on Earth. And Pallades, the seven sisters, known anciently as Kima, will be in this position, along with that beautiful morning star called the Lamb, or Tale, Hamal in Aramaic, will be in this location. While Ursa Major, the seven star cluster, known as the Bear, scripturally, will be in this location pointing us to true north with the fixed star known today as Polaris. While the scriptural star Arcturus, known anciently as Ash, will be below the horizon along with Spica or Tsamak, the branch or the seed, if you will. So this is the sign for the fifth new moon. Everyone will see this. More specifically, they will see Orion, Pallades, and the Lamb. In some locations on Earth, this will be beyond their reach. We'll explain more of this in a second. Take a look uh, at this view in regards to putting in the ground view. So, if you go outside, at the dawn, you will see these scriptural stars. Yes, this sign for the fifth new moon. Again, in some locations on Earth, this will not be seen, the North Star, and uh, parts of Ursa Major. So again, here's 2021, again for my area. Here is 2020, same sign for the fifth new moon. The moon in this case, in the annual cycle of 2020, that pagan year, the moon was 99.4% illuminated. 16 degrees above the horizon. Take a look at 2019, same scriptural sign. Again, this is a celestial clock and calendar. It repeats the signs, letting you know what season you're in. More importantly, which actual month. In this particular year, in 2019, the moon was 99.3% illuminated, 22 degrees above the horizon. If you put all of this together, look at the symmetry from year to year. This is why we trust it, because we're not leaning on our own understanding, 
Bereans who search the word daily with great eagerness also test and prove these perfect witnesses of light from above. This is why they're perfect. They provide that continuity, that perfection, that harmony. So again, we can test and prove this and we are looking forward extremely once again for all of the photographs and film footage all over Earth because uh, Orion, Pallades, and the Lamb, everyone on Earth will see. And as we all know, only uh, folks uh, in the northern Hemis plain will see Ursa Major and the North Star, uh, where some folks on the southern Hemis plain, as some call it, uh, will not be able to see uh, this entirety, but they will see this portion of the sign for the fifth new moon. That basic. Again, it's not what we think we know. It's what we can scripturally prove in creation. So let's move on to category two with the topic, the scriptural count to Shavuot. And we covered this in this scriptural study video previously entitled the Pagan Pentecost or scriptural Shavuot. And last year we went out in the wilderness and we conducted and facilitated uh, celestial clock and calendar workshops in creation where folks come out and test and prove everything we're talking about with the sun, moon, and stars. Again, we don't lean on our own understanding. We go outside with the evidence to test and prove it, thus proving that we are trusting in Yahuwah, in his esteem, and what he provides with the esteem of the sun, the moon, and the stars, all three witnesses of light. So, the cool thing about the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah is many folks that are now starting to forecast are learning that Shavuot does not exist in the division one category. Out of the four divisions scripturally in a year, Shavuot does not occur scripturally by Moshe's writings or with the sun, moon, and stars in the first division. And think about this. The Catholic Church, yes, the second Babylon, actually, is still to this day, regrettably, is influencing folks to celebrate Pentecost, or Shavuot, between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. They do not celebrate it in the summer time period, Division 2. Think about that for a moment. Because it's easily proven that our Messiah Yahushua, our only teacher, stated what? Do you not say there are still four months and the harvest comes? And we are fully aware that the Messiah Yahushua, as covered in these scriptural study videos previously, knew the 40-day and 40-night count. He knew the three-day and three-night count. And he knew that Shavuot, as a result, was in the summer time period in the second division. Because during Shavuot, it's all about the number two, if you will. They receive two tablets with the commandments and they received two loaves of fine flour. Yes, the summer wheat is only harvested after the summer solstice. Very important agricultural facts. There are two fasts and again, there are two counts. Two tablets, two loaves, two fasts, and two counts, which are, count one, seven Sabbaths after first fruits. You shall count for yourselves seven completed Sabbaths. Count number two is a count of 50 days, which starts until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. You count 50 days. So, again, just read the scriptures and test and prove it in creation with the sun, moon, and stars. And again, you can number all of this. So we do our calendar from right to left as scripture was originally written. So as you can see, here's the first month and here's first fruits. So we count seven Sabbaths after first fruits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, we count 50 days. 
And as you can notice, the 40 day and 40 night count aligns perfectly with Moshe's counts to Shavuot. This is so critical. And notice the difference between a 29 day or 30 day month in the fourth month or a 29 day or 30 day month in the third month. And what this does in regards to the total days to uh, Shavuot. We believe that Shavuot was not a one day occurrence. Out of the three times that they were commanded to go to Jerusalem for the feasts, which were obviously the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then Shavuot, and then the Feast of Sukkot, we do not believe they would go all the way to Jerusalem for one day. We believe the fifth new moon would be uh, in that cycle because you'd have to travel back after one day and that travel obviously would occur on a new moon day, which obviously wouldn't take place. New moon day is a consecrated day. So again, as you can see, this was a three-day event. I'm sorry, a two-day event here in 2021 because Shavuot this year will be on the pagan day of uh, Saturday, August 21st, and the new moon day, as already covered, will be on the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd. So this is the forecast, our draft, uh, for the count, where we forecast for the entire year for the 2021 and 2022 pagan cycle. Last year, same process, and as we can see, based on the differences of the third month and how many days there are in the third month versus the fourth month determines that cycle was a three-day celebration because of the total days as it relates to the fourth and third month. Take a look at 2019. It was a four-day cycle for the celebration of Shavuot based on Moshe's counts and so forth. And this is why it's so important to number your days to Shavuot because it's not on the same day every year and this is why you've got to count it. If it was on the same day every year, scripture would say that particular day, like it says for trumpets, the first day of the seventh month, the day of atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month, and so forth. So again, there is a reason scripturally why are why we are to rightly handle the word of truth. There is a reason why we have to number our days. It keeps us in practice of proper discernment skill sets. So again, all of these visuals will be attached to the description uh, box of this YouTube video for anyone to critique. In fact, we encourage it because if we have made a mistake, we get corrected. And we welcome correction. And this is why we study these things in workshops outside in creation. We take the word, Moshe's writings, all of the prophetic writings, and then we go outside with a camera and then we film what the sun, moon, and stars do to verify these forecasts. It's a great process and proves in these workshops that we are attempting to not lean on our own understanding, but to trust Yahuwah with all of our hearts, souls, and minds, if you will. Which leads us to the third category. Yes, the prophet Daniel and his prophetic 2300 day count and how it aligns to Shavuot. Let's take a look at it. We covered this in this scriptural study video and others in previous years and continue to number our days to Shavuot and the fifth month with this count. Why? Because the Moedim, or the set-apart appointed times of Yahuwah, are called, or defined as some say, as a dress rehearsal for each and every year, let alone the prophetic uh, information that we receive from both the uh, minor and major prophets. So let's continue with this. We firmly believe that the prophetic counts were intended to be continual. 
and regrettably world religions and those still imprisoned in them either consciously or unconsciously do not understand why the prophetic counts are continual and are baked or embedded into the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. So again, why is the 2300 day count fully immersed continually into the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah? And why do world religions trample underfoot this continuity? Why do they do this? Well, let's take a, a look at this, will we? So as an example, if you count the 2300 day count, starting the day after, the morrow, after the first day of Abib, New Moon Day, for the first month of Abib, uh, for the start of all scriptural years, and you count 2300 days, it will take you directly to Shavuot in a seven year cycle of continuity. Yes, the 2300 day count is continuous. So this is an actual empirical fact. Now you can discount this evidence or this witness and you can brush it aside like many do. And we were guilty of that in the past. But based on this continuity and the fact that this happens and that anyone can number their days uh, doing this, we no longer are willing to hide this information. So again, the day after the new moon day, add 2300 days and it brings you to Shavuot. Does this happen all the time? Is this truly a dress rehearsal? Well, here we are again. If you count 2300 days on the morrow after the first day of Abib, new moon day, you will come to the pagan day of August 21st, as we talked about. This year is Shavuot on this particular day. So, again, anyone can test and prove this for themselves. Add 2300 days, you come to this actual result. Again, all of these visuals are attached to the description box. Each and every one of you can test and prove this. In fact, we encourage it. And if we have made a mistake anywhere, which we do, please correct us. We welcome correction. Again, the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah is embedded with continuity. This is why Yahuwah is known as the Almighty One of Order. Hallelujah. Yes, the appointed times are indeed dress rehearsals annually, getting us prepared for the future. Because Bereans are striving every day to become noble, to truly become repairers of the breach. In scriptural studies, as it relates to the scriptural original words, the original name of the Father and Son, and the scriptural law, which includes the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Again, we cover this in workshops in a couple of categories. So one of those categories are the proposed scriptural study format. And another workshop is done outside in creation, like we're doing here, upcoming once again for Shavuot and the fifth new moon in creation. We're going out in the wilderness in a canoe in the backcountry where there is no electronic devices, no online services. We are going online with the Father of Lights outside to test and prove what he provides, his esteem. We are not seeking each other's esteem. We are not interested in groups and movements. We are fully interested in the esteem of the Almighty Father of Lights and the esteem he provides with his three witnesses of light. So if you're interested in this type of process, feel free to email us at familyone at rogers.com. So in these workshops, workshops outside in creation, we actually go outside and witness those three witnesses of light with the sun, moon, and stars in all four night watches.
we study the word. And we take our cameras and we test and prove our forecasts. Again, proving we're not leaning on anyone's understanding, but leaning on what Yahuwah provides to tell time. So hallelujah for those folks that actually forecast. Because you'll find out really quick that what unites us is the three witnesses of light. It's not the esteem from anyone or what someone thinks. It's what Yahuwah provides. So yes, indeed, the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, will indeed be New Moon Day for the fifth month everywhere on earth because of the full light and the full witnesses of light that exist from our Father of Lights. So again, feel free to test and prove this for yourself with a camera. Do the film and photograph footage. Please share it because we share it back with Bereans all over Earth. The only contacts we haven't made yet are in Iceland and Greenland. And we still do not understand why we haven't been able to connect with anyone there. But we have workshops going on on every continent, again, except Iceland or Greenland. And if every, anyone knows any Bereans in these locations, please let us know. We would love to connect with them in those areas on Earth as well. So again, the question is answered, not by a man and or a woman or a world religious institution, but the question is answered by the witnesses of light from our Father of Lights. Yes, the pagan day of Sunday, August 22nd, will indeed be the fifth new moon. Again, it's not what we think we know, it's what we can scripturally prove in creation. And I would like to thank, as I always do, all of those Bereans out there that share that pride is concerned with who is right, but humility is concerned with what is right. And I learned this thanks to many Brians out there helping me personally, let alone each other, as we gather in the name which is above all names. Because, for if anyone thinks himself to be somebody, when he is not, he deceives himself. This is why we focus so much on the evidence and not what we personally think. And this is why we work so hard to provide that evidence so that others can test and prove it themselves. And that is what unites us. If we do not use the evidence, that is what will divide us. So again, I'm not a teacher or a prophet in any shape, form, or manner. I am just a Berean as well, striving to become noble. In summary, Please don't use this calendar as a hammer because we are all still learning. None of us are experts with the celestial clock and calendar yet. And the proof of that is how many of us, including me, have experienced a Sabbath rest on a seventh year Shemitah, meaning resting for that whole year in a seventh year let alone how many of us have rested on a 50th year jubilee. We are still learning, aren't we? So for the folks out there using this calendar as a hammer, please understand what scriptural boldness actually is. Boldness is not shouting out at the top of your lungs, fire and brimstone. Boldness is the activity the love, which is not a thought, but an action of seeking out the evidence, testing and proving it, and then having the courage to share it with others, regardless of the negativity that will follow. The way is hard pressed. You can share this evidence, but it does not mean people will use it. That is between them personally and the Father of Lights. And we pray in Palau, that the Messiah Yahushua and the actions of his taught ones with the set apart spirit, the Ruach, will bring this evidence to light and then will be tested and proven and then obviously followed 
adopted into one's life, so to speak. So again, thank you for this opportunity to share in the name which is above all names. And in closing, may Yahuwah keep and guard you and your loved ones. And may the Messiah Yahushua be in everything we say and do. Have a Yasim Shavuot and have a Yasim Fifth New Moon Day, everyone. All the best.